Well, we know that many of our viewers, lots of our viewers, fellas, love the old VFA oh, stuff. Oh. Did we ever? Can we have some of that? Uh, we certainly can, because the Dandenong Football Club is making sure that their history won't be forgotten. These days, Dandenong Shepley Oval is home to the under-18 team Southern Stingrays. But there was a time in an era considered by many to be the golden age of football when it was the home of the mighty Dandenong Redlegs. And here's the siren. And it means 12-12. That's the score to Port Melbourne. Dandenong 16-13. Of course, the crowd stream onto the ground here. Uh, for the moment, Dandenong have won the 1967 BFA Grand Final. And look at the second. Here's the kick out now from Leslie. It's on the half back line, and Sheehan gets it to him, and Sheehan is mark. Little Sheehan, this ball is well on the ground, and there it is. The Tyrant's gone. Dandenong mark from you for 1971. And look at the scene here. Players being hugged by one another. Crowd racing out onto the ground. Repeat the final scores. Dandenong, 14 14, a total of 98. Getting home in a magnificent grand final. Preston were defeated by a goal. Gonna take a sentimental journey. With those Halcyon VFA days now just a distant memory, former Dandenong and Richmond champion Kevin Shinners has come to the rescue to ensure that the once powerful club will not be forgotten. Gonna make a sentimental journey to renew old memories. From the point of view of uh, my uh, experience and uh, observations down here, uh, coming back from the time that I started, and I walk into this area and I think to myself, uh, we haven't got anything that says that the Dandenong Football Club existed even, and it's a, a club that had a, a 120 years of history. So um, fortunately, there was a uh, one of our good supporters by the name of Sid Blake, when the club folded in 1994, uh, was able to um, rescue quite a bit of the memorabilia and, uh, and was able to uh, keep it in his possession for a while. So um, a number of us players, and I mean the guys mainly from the 1971 Premiership side in that era, uh, we decided that we would try and do something about getting some at least recognition that the club existed and hence the, uh, the cabinet that we, uh, we were able to uh, purchase and, uh, and with some uh, wonderful supporters that came to the fore with us. And uh, we were able to then put together a reasonable amount of uh, memorabilia from what Sid uh, originally rescued. And I guess as a result of that and a little bit of publicity, we started getting uh, some other uh, memorabilia handed to us from people that had a great interest in Dandong Football Club, you know, in the early days. We started in 1874 and, uh, and finished up in 1994, so it's a, it's a great history of the club and uh, I guess the disappointing thing was what we were seeing was people would come along and watch the Stingrays play and, uh, and they'd probably come up here and look around the walls and there was nothing to show that the that Andy Footy Club did exist and wouldn't even know, uh, you know about the likes of the Frosty Millers and the Eddie Milais and the Pat Flaherty's and those sort of guys that were um, great names in the VFA. Uh, as a result of all of that, now we look behind us and at least there's something uh, that shows that we did exist and that the, those sort of people did wonders for the uh, for the game and and for the town. Across the ward, centre half board, Flaherty takes it. Oh, and coming down on him uh, pretty solidly. in that's Eddie Melee getting the ball in the pack there lines them up well I've never oh. ever seen anything like this before in my life I've seen it at the start of a quarter but not at the start of a grand final the got in receiver. there it is a goal kicked by Frosty Miller a 
and that'll be one talked about for a long, long time. In those days, being on television in the, in the great era in particular, in the um, 60s, 70s and the 80s, um, you know, um, I guess some of those players were as well known as uh, AFL, VFL players because uh, people had their their favourite team of a Saturday and they had their favourite VFA team on a Sunday. So, uh, you know, it, it's good to be able to show some of the young people that uh, some of the uh, history and the records that uh, actually were, were created back in those days. Kevin is envious of today's Shepley Oval tenants when he recalls the conditions under which he and his teammates played. I think that that was one of the things that probably prompted me to uh, to do something about getting the, the cabinet and the memorabilia, but if I look out on the oval uh, here at the present time and think that uh, most of the games that we played in the Port Melbournes and the Prestons and that sort of thing, and we played in ankle deep mud, um, and I look at the surface at the moment, it's like a bowling green, and uh, even the uh, facilities here in the grandstand now uh, that uh, I know. I can always remember my wife saying that when uh, when I was playing here that she used to spend her time running up and down the concrete steps of the grandstand beside us uh, chasing our kids and never saw a, an inch of the footy or a minute of the football. But that was, uh, was so cold and wind blowing and so forth in those days. The other thing that was amazing that uh, we used to have a, a team of people down the creek end that used to be there to recover the footies out of the creek when uh, Frosty would bang a 60 metre goal uh, through and it would go through post high and, uh, and land in the creek. So uh, they don't even have to do that now. But despite the basic facilities, the crowds flock to see the red legs every Sunday. Here at Dandenong, um, it's hard to believe that when we talk about the crowds that watch the footy now, and if, if you've got a thousand people at a, uh, at a VFA game, you'd be doing well, or a VFL as it's called now. But we at Dandenong used to have six and eight deep on the fence. Um, it would be nothing to get between 10 and 12,000 people here uh, watching, watching our games. And, and that would happen at, at other VFA games as well. But, I guess the thing that was great about it too was, uh, you know, 16 man aside, it allowed, um, you know, players, like, as I mentioned, like Flaherty and, and Hibbert and, and Evans and those sort of players, Phil Cleary, a little bit more space to run. It was a tough competition. Um, you know, at times, I know when I went and watched games later in, in my uh, uh, time, that. You'd look out on the ground and you'd think, gee, I don't know how I ever played out there. It looked to be too tough. But, uh, but even though it was, uh, was hard and tough and, and people used to love the, uh, the clashes on the field and so forth, um, fortunately there weren't too many bad injuries and so forth. And, you know, sometimes I wonder whether it was just a lot of bluff a lot of the time. They were great days and Kevin regrets that they didn't continue just a little longer. Yeah, look, I would. Uh, I think I would work harder uh, at the time when the club was in uh, some financial difficulty, and uh, I, I believe that probably we we should have, particularly the players that that had the successful era, and, and I'm talking around about the 60s and 70s, uh, even though they came back again in in '91. But um, it was a time where. Um, I guess we probably would have wished for a little bit more support in those days from the council. Um, and that's, that's probably being a bit harsh on the council, but when I look out there now and I see how much uh, he's provided here, um, sometimes um, things are, are done with too much haste and uh, a bit of a knee-jerk reaction, I, I think. I'm disappointed at times that our group of players in particular, uh, we didn't do something a little bit more aggressive to keep the club operating. Kevin is keen to hear from anybody who may have some old Red Legs memorabilia. Yeah, we'll continue to, uh, to try and gather uh, as much as we can. Unfortunately, um, you know, we, we don't have a lot of trophies or, uh, or uh, honour boards that uh, would reflect a, a lot of the people that did a lot of hard work 
in those early days, and, and I think some of those are lost forever. But it's amazing how uh, once you get a little bit of uh, publicity out there, um, there is, is an incredible amount of people that followed the VFA absolutely religiously and, and passionately, and continually I get phone calls from people uh, letting me know that they've got this little bit of uh, uh, memorabilia or this uh, note or a record or something like that. And so we will continue to gather it uh, and hope to expand the, uh, the cabinet um, here in, in Shepley Oval. I gotta take that sentimental journey, sentimental journey. Phil from the Strathmore.